This is Resolute and the Resolute Podcast, where we make men better. I am Vince Miller, your host, and today we're looking at the topic of God's mission to Haiti. Men, welcome back to the program. If this is your first time tuning in, well, thank you for joining us. Resolute exists to make men better because we know men today face unique challenges on their quest for godly manhood. Therefore, we desire to help men grow by providing them with a spiritual game plan that will launch them toward being better men, fathers, husbands, and leaders. Because we believe when you make one man better, everyone gets better. For more information on our program for individuals and groups, go to BeResolute.org. We have numerous great tools for men on our website, one being our free Men's Daily Devo. It is short and sweet to get in your inbox. Please check it out, guys, along with all of our other resources. And now, let's dive in. So guys, we are joined today by one of our Resolute members and actual sponsors, Jeremy Brandt from American Family Insurance. Jeremy, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Love course. the podcast. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, Jeremy is a, is a member of Resolute, but he's been married for about 17 years, has a couple of great kids, uh, loves Jesus Christ, and he's taken a leap to jump into a mission trip. And I believe that men should truly jump in to God's mission across the planet because God has a call for all nations. So Jeremy, I know that you shared with me a little while back that you jumped into what you felt like was a call to take men on a mission trip to Haiti. And I was intrigued by that because I, I just loved that it flowed out of this, I really think this overflow of your heart. And I just, why don't you tell guys today about your experience in Haiti. Haiti is one of the poorest countries on planet Earth. Yeah. It is only 90 minutes from our soil, which is crazy. I mean, you got the richest country in the world, 90 minutes away from the poorest country in the world, terribly impoverished. I've been there a couple of times. I know you've been there even more. Tell us about your experience in, in Haiti, Jeremy. Yeah, you know, I think it's easy for us to sit here and watch the news and see these things going on, whether it's Africa or Haiti or wherever it's at, and to kind of think that it's a different planet and not really understand that, like you said, it's 90 minutes away from our country, the poorest city in the world. Um, so I went there in 2013 after reading the book Crazy Love, kind of got convicted of just kind of how easy my life was uh, living here in America. And I love America. I mean, we are so blessed to be here, but I just thought, you know, I need to go see different parts of the world. And so I went to Haiti um, and was just stunned by it. And like I said, after seeing it on the news, when you smell it and you feel it and you just see these kids that are just, they have no clothes on, they're running around, they don't have water. Um, and we were there three years after the major earthquake and just to see the devastation still. Um, and the thought just kept running through my mind was if this was America, we would never allow this to be happening, right? We'd be outraged and it's 90 minutes away. And so, you know, just having that feeling of being dirty, seeing it, tasting it and understanding how poor these people, I just had a passion that this just isn't right. We need to, we need to do more for these people and reach out and do as much as we can. Yeah. And it's, it's quite altering to jump into a different country's atmosphere yeah. for a while. It adds so much mm -hmm. to your perspective and your life, yeah. even how you think about God changes, yeah. right? Absolutely. So it, so, but tell guys, I, I really want you to tell the guys listening yeah. because I think it was so inspirational for me to hear from you. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell them what inspired you to lead this trip because now you're moving from participant to leader. Right. Yeah. Tell, tell the guys about that a little bit. Yeah, so on every one of my trips, I have been outnumbered by women by a lot. So my <laughs> first team, we had two men on it, um, not including the leader who was a man. So we had two out of 14. My second team, we had 16 on there and there were three men, one being the leader. So again, only two goers were men. Um, and then I have led two teams, uh, and on both of those teams, I've had two other men that have been on the team. So predominantly women. And on my third trip, I just kind of was like, you know, what is causing this? Why, why are men not going and doing this? And it just became a kind of a passion. Like I need to, I need to get men down here. And I, I really think change can happen. And so 
for a couple of years, I kind of put it off. You know, you keep getting that nudge from God. And you're like, nope, God, I, I don't think you're really calling me to do that. I'm thinking something else. Um, but in May of this year, I just really had a feeling that I need to do this. I need to step out and I need to invite men and get them down there and see what it's all about. And I just think the change we can make, um, it's far greater than Haiti. It, it will change our neighborhoods, our families, our work, everything, if we can get more men to, to jump in and, and do this stuff. Yeah, I love that. And I, I love it because when you said that to me, I have the same heart for men, for men to jump into what God is doing on planet Earth. But for some reason, we we have a hard time with doing that. Why do you think it is that men have a hard time? Yeah, I think some of it is just how different we are from women, obviously. I think women see these kids and you know they have that motherly instinct. I need to go down and hold these kids and I need to help them. Totally understand that. And I think on the man side, it's more, we're task oriented, we're result oriented. Um, we would rather write a check and say, hey, here's $2,000, build the house you need to do or get the well built, whatever you need. We're, we're kind of result oriented. Um, and we're not going down to Haiti to build houses and to you know fix bridges and stuff like that. We're going down there to invest in the people. And I think for men, sometimes that maybe is intimidating or they're like, that's just not my, my role. Um, but I think that if men go down and experience it, the change that they can have, and not that women can't have that same change, but I just think men have such an opportunity when they experience something like that to come back and share with others, and then more men are going to follow them, and women will follow them. And I just think that there's just such an ability for men to make resounding change when they step out in faith like that, that God's just going to bless them in so many areas. So. Yeah. Okay, so tell, you, you kind of alluded to this a little mm -hmm. bit. So you go down to Haiti. What kinds of activities are you doing down there? Yeah. Like, give us a, a few examples. Yeah, so um, you do two water truck days, and what that is is basically in Port-au-Prince, um, there's a city that literally has no running water, and most of Haiti doesn't have running water. And so boy, what we do is we drive into these cities. We have a water truck, just like you would see at a construction, a construction <laughs> site here in the States, and we literally start filling up their buckets. That's all they have to carry their water back. So a five-gallon bucket, 10-gallon bucket, we fill it up with water. We help them carry it back to their house, which is not a house like you're thinking of. Right. It's a shack. Um, and that's their water until we come back again. So in City Soleil, which is the poorest city in the world, um, is where we go into. And there are no other groups that go into this city. Mm -hmm. um, so Healing Haiti is the only organization that's bringing water in there. Um, we deliver the water. We play with the kids. Um, other days, we'll go to orphanages, play with the kids, hang out with them. Um, we'll go to, in Haiti, the older people are called elders. We'll go out to the elders, hang out with them, maybe bring them supplies, stuff like that. Um, and then at night, kind of hang out. It's kind of like a guy's weekend, if you want to think <laughs> of it like that. At night, kind of just come back, debrief, kind of talk about what did you experience today? What went on? You know, what were the feelings you have? And then how can you take that back to America and how can we make change? So that's basically what we do for a week. And then one day we kind of have an off day where we kind of just take a breath, maybe go down to see a pretty part of Haiti and hang out at the beach and just talk about, you know, what we've been through and what we experienced as a team. Mm -hmm. So it's a very full experience. It sounds like you're going through it very safely yeah. as a team. You're all staying in one location together. You got a couple or a variety of different events that you're doing throughout the week that kind of keep you busy, yep. like with workload during the day. It's a lot of building relationships, a lot of communicating. Uh, even though you probably don't speak the language, yeah. you're communicating right. through life, yeah, sharing life, serving other yeah. people, right? And then you get this time to process afterwards, which I would assume is probably super beneficial because for some people who have never been on a trip before, yeah. they're being inundated with a lot of new information. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. I think those times at night, those are the moments you're going to remember the most, to be honest, is um, when you open up with a other group of guys or your team and just exp express what you're feeling. And you're going to be surprised that the other people around you go, oh, I felt the exact same thing. You know, that's exactly what I was thinking. And so just to bounce those ideas off of how do we take this back to our families? How do we take this back to our jobs and use this to change our worlds, um, that is seriously the most valuable part of all of these trips. Yeah, I, I like I like what you're sharing here, and here's why I like it so much is because I had the same experience when I led a trip to Haiti, and it was that I was a male leader, and there was only like two other guys on the trip, and 
that made it somewhat lonely. Mm -hmm. But I will say it did, did impassion me toward inviting more men to come, which is why I think you're sitting here today is you're saying, look, I'm willing to take a group of guys mm -hmm. that want to go at a time of year, which uh, is cheaper to go mm -hmm. to Haiti so that they can invest in it. But it sounds like you get to bring some things back with you too, yeah. Jeremy, that are pretty fo profound. What would you say that a, a guy would bring back with him from Haiti as something that would change his life forever? Yeah, yeah I think there's so much. I think the biggest thing is perspective. Um, and uh, when I, we talked about this before, is like when you get stuck in traffic on 35W, now when you go to work, you get frustrated and you're like, oh, I hate traffic. <laughs> but when you come back from Haiti and you're sitting in your air conditioned car and you're listening to the radio, you just have a totally different perspective because when you're sitting in that traffic on a missions trip, and you're like, how do these people do this every single day? I don't care what time it is, the traffic's awful. You just have a different perspective. And I think beyond that, you bring back a perspective of how blessed we are. And now how can I relay that to other people? Like we are so blessed where we live and we don't know it. We don't mm -hmm. even understand how blessed we are. Um, how can I explain to people like, listen, we need to be so thankful for what we have and then maybe that translates to them going to experience Haiti. And then they come back and they share that with 10 more people. And if we just continually share that story and share the experience we've had, that's the stuff that comes back that's life-changing forever. And you're never gonna forget Haiti. It's not something where you go there one time and you come back and you're like, I'm done, don't need to do that again. You might never go back. I totally get that. It might be one and done, but you're never going to forget your experience while you were there. And that's gonna, tra that's gonna translate throughout the rest of your life. Yeah, you know, I remember, just to let you know, you probably don't know this about me, but I've been to 24 different countries in my lifetime on mission trips, and I'll never forget the first one. And it just leaves a mark on you, kind of like when you have your first kid. Right. You know, it's just the first kid leaves a mark on your yeah. life. So does the second one and the third one, et cetera. All right. of them do, but yeah. it's just there's something about that, that experience one, yeah. that's hard to capture with words. Yeah. Right. And I think that's true about a trip to another country. Yeah, we may never be able to completely help Haiti. We may not be able to, as you've said to me before, fix Haiti, but we can sure uh, experience it and we can bring other people there to experience it, to play a part in not only their lives, but missionaries lives the gospel's live, and then bring that back, that change perspective back to our world where we do, we have everything. And that's what I've learned from mission trips. That's why I encourage people to go on it because they will be changed. Their perspective on life will be changed forever. I mean, I hope and pray that my children will have this experience with their own group mm -hmm. at some point in life. I've even dreamed about bringing my own family on a mission mm -hmm. trip at some point just to expose them to it. And I know some families that do that, I think that's a wise idea yeah. because not only is it the gospel to the world and the gospel to men, but it's the gospel to families. And it helps them to understand another perspective, kind of like crazy love woke you yeah. up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. God's love wakes us all up. And so, you know, I was thinking today, Jeremy, this is just a text that came at me. It's actually my life verse. And I was thinking about this today when I knew you were going to join us on the podcast. But here's the words. And this is a significant moment. It's Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8 was Jesus' words to the disciples right before he ascends into heaven. And he says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, that's the city, all Judea, that's the surrounding countryside, Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth, that's the planet. And Jesus in this moment for me describes his vision for the world. And his vision for the world isn't just for us individually, it's for the planet, and he loves every one of us. And you know what today is? Today is the day that Jesus said these words in history. Mm -hmm. It's Ascension Day. Mm -hmm. That's today. Yeah. And so I think the call is for men to be called into that. To call, We are called into the gospel, into a mission that's greater than ourselves, and we've got to step out of ourselves, outside of this, this comfort zone of life, pulling our car into the garage, going to church and going to the same stores every week, pull ourselves out of our comfort zone. And once we do, we experience incredible things spiritually, right? Absolutely. So you gotta, you gotta tell us today, how, how can we 
join you on this mission trip, Jeremy. Tell us a little bit the logistics and the date. Yeah, so the dates are October. Sorry, September 25th through October 2nd of this year. Um, the nice thing with it this year is Healing Hades actually discounted the trip. So typically it's 850 that uh, for in-country costs. That's everything that's going to be included, your meals, everything like that. And then you have your airfare, which you pay on your own. Mm -hmm. So they've actually discounted it. So it's only 650 that you have to pay for Healing Haiti to go and then your airfare. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is, is every trip I've been on, I have raised more than enough money to cover my airfare. So it ends up being, it's not going to cost me anything out of my pocket. Now, some people want to pay their own weight. Totally get that. You can do that. But if you are afraid that the money is the issue, I promise you, God is going to find a way to get you there. Do not let the money be a problem. So other than that, it's really simple. Once you've raised the money, we have three meetings before we go on the trip. We all fly down together. We all fly back together. You're never alone in country. You're going to be with a group of guys the whole time. Uh, as far as safety goes, I've never once not felt safe when I've been in Haiti. Not one time. They do a great job down there. Healing Haiti has been doing this for a long time and they've got it down pat. Um, so they, they really do a great job down there. So Again, those dates are October uh, 2nd is when we come back. Mm -hmm. We leave on September 25th. So it's mm -hmm. Monday to Monday. It's one week, mm -hmm. um, but it's a week that will change the rest of your life. I promise well, you that. I love that. I love that. And we're going to give all our listeners today a link so they can connect to you. But guys, if uh, if if at all you want to attend this trip, I want to like beg you to seriously consider it, to pray about it, to think about it. Jeremy's looking for men that want to attend with him on this trip. So, and we're going to be praying for Jeremy while he's there. And maybe we'll get an update from you Absolutely. when you get back and yeah. see, see how it went. Uh, and guys, if you're looking uh, for someone to sponsor to go on a trip, I'm sure Jeremy would love your support and to have you consider that. So there's, we'll hope you'll support him and the guys going. And Jeremy, just thank you so much for being with us yeah, today. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love what you guys do with Resolute. You guys do a great job. I love the podcast. Um, it's one of those things me and my wife love supporting you guys. You've done such a great job. But again, I just want to encourage men, um, even if it's not with my team or you know with Healing Haiti, do it one time in your life. I promise you it will change you forever. Mm -hmm. There's a good challenge. Well, well, guys, that's the show. Thanks for listening. Now, as we close, I want to remind you that none of this would be possible without you. Your prayers, your financial support, and your encouragement keep us going. Therefore, we would be honored to have you consider a monthly donation to Resolute. Even a small gift will make a huge difference for men around the country. And through the end of this month, with a gift of $10 a month or more, we will give you full access to our one-year game plan for men. This will give you access to our web portal and app, which includes lesson videos, podcast, daily devos, and more. Just material to help you grow in your faith as a man of God. This is a full-scale game plan that will guide you through a one-year process that will pay out dividends in your faith. Just head to the website, bresolute.org, click the word store on the menu bar, and then select the word donation. All gifts are tax deductible. And guys, I really do hope that you enjoyed this podcast today, but please know that the time we spent together is worthless unless you do something with it. Act on it. So do something today. Maybe consider praying about going on a trip with Jeremy. He's willing to take the leap. Why not take the leap with him and get off the bench and get into the game? And I will see you right back here next time on The Resolute Podcast.